what is my vision for the future of media? So I tried to close my eyes and think about it, and I realized I'm really afraid to close my eyes. I'm afraid to close my eyes because I feel like if I close my eyes and blink, I might open them and find that I've been misrepresented again. I might open my eyes and realize that I've been dehumanized again, that people that dress like me and look like me are not allowed to be free with tracked, deported, violated, and so it's hard for me to close my eyes and think about my vision, but I tried. And when I did, I thought about Audre Lorde's quote, when she said, when I dared to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, it becomes less important whether I am afraid. So these days, I'm less afraid. I'm less afraid because everywhere I look, I see victory. I saw in Georgia, when they stopped the legislation that would have blocked them from owning their own community media. I saw how, they, how the Associated Press dropped the I word. I saw how 90,000 people leveraged their comments to say, no, we don't want expensive prison phone rates. 90,000 people. And that gives me courage. That gives me hope, and that gives me more hope than any rhetoric of hope and change that any president anywhere in the world could ever share with me, right? When I think about my vision for the future, what I'm thinking about is our ability to craft a digital privacy, uh, digital privacy legislation that actually supports natural migration as a human act that supports full and fair employment, that actually gives formerly incarcerated people a real second chance, that closes and shrinks our gang databases. That's the kind of digital privacy legislation I want. I want the kind of journalism that allows for us to be accurately and fairly represented. I want real standards. I want journalism that is publicly funded and not corporate, not corporate, not corporate. I want us to be the ones who decide in the next 20 years that corporations are not people. And they don't deserve more rights than we do. So I'm gonna stop with that because I'll say this, if we can take away the rights of corporations as people, if we can create some standards for journalism and some funding for journalism, if we can create legislation that protects our digital rights, I think that we have a chance to survive as real, full, alive human beings. So what will it take to build a winning movement for a better media? First of all, the first thing that it's going to take is that we listen. That we listen very, very, very carefully to the early warning system that people of color are in this country. Listen very carefully. Listen carefully to the millions of people being deported. Listen very carefully to the hundreds of thousands and millions of people incarcerated. Listen very carefully to the hundreds of thousands of people being thrown out of employment. Listen very well and carefully because they will tell you about your future. The second step is listen to each other. I, I'm honored to be on stage with these people. These are brilliant, brilliant people. These are people who teach me every single day, and I'm honored to be in the field with brilliant people every single day all over this country. We have to listen to each other. The interpersonal conflict, the lack of trust, the feelings of betrayal, the feelings of scarcity, all of these things are challenges and barriers put in the way of collaboration. We can overcome them, and we must, because we're better together. We can't do it alone. None of us can win this by ourselves. The corporations have thousands of lobbyists. All we have are you right here in this room and the people outside that look just like you. That's who we have. So we have to listen and we have to work it out. The third thing we have to do, and I want you to help me out. I want you to say, beloved community. I don't feel beloved right now. Uh, let's try it again. <laughs> beloved community. That's what we're building when we build networks. It's not just about, as Jenny said, being a united front. It's about really being able to figure out where we are aligned and how we move that power together. Our networks are about beloved communities. Martin Luther King talked about the beloved community from the perspective of, of spirituality. 
I'm talking about the beloved community from the perspective of both spirit, mind, body, heart. Let's bring our beloved community into the future. We need it. It is actually a strategy. The last thing that I think that we need to build a better media system, besides networks that build beloved community, besides listening, is this. We need to make the changes that we need to change the rules. We do. But that's only a fraction of what we need to do. We need to do what they're doing in Detroit. We need to build, right, from the ground up. We need to do what Free Press is doing, change the rules. We need to do what organizers who are not in this room, who are working on different issues, are doing, which is organizing day to day in their community to build collective power. That is something that we don't always know everything about. But we need to value and validate the methodology of community organizing. Because without community organizing, none of us win. So I'm going to close with this. If we build beloved community, if we listen, if we value community organizing, community organizing, there we go, I don't know, I didn't plan that part, you know. And if we build our networks, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, the next time we face a fight, we won't only be reactionary, we won't only be reactive, we'll be affirmative and we will win. In my opinion, what I'm going to do when I go home is I'm going to make sure that the people in my community uh, raise their voices to ensure that in their state, which is in California, uh, there are no, well, I think we already have uh, laws preventing kickbacks in California, right, for prison phones. But I'm going to make sure then that the states next to mine <laughs> make sure they don't have any kickbacks. They're not allowed to have kickbacks on their, uh, uh, on their uh, prison phone calls. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that state to state. The second thing I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to make sure that we still have a lifeline uh, through the Universal Service Fund because we still need a lifeline because there's still millions of poor people in this country. Um, I think the third thing that I'm going to do is work with my municipal government to make sure that uh, there are some standards around digital privacy that are codified into our digital inclusion uh, bills locally um, that make sure that they're not just about uh, what's happening at the federal level, but that privacy is protected in a real way, not in a neoliberal way, but in a real way right here at home. I think another thing, um, you know what? I'm not going to even do this, these notes right here. What I'm going to do is tell you really, this is what I think you should do. I think you should join the Media Action Grassroots Network. That's what I think you should do. <laughs> I think you should join Magnet. I think you should build your own networks. I think you should build everywhere. I think you should learn about what it means to build something. Okay? That's what I think you should do. I think you should support the organizations in the Media Action Grassroots Network. I think you should support Media Mobilizing Project and Media Literacy Project. I think you should support the Independent Media Center in Urbana-Champaign. I think you should support the folk in New York and Art Exchange and the folk all over this country and Highlander. Why? Because these are the groups on the ground that will make something happen in their community. That's why. It's not about fundraising. It's about organizing. So if you yourself want to organize in your community, there are people already there doing it. So join them.